All right, welcome everyone to another season of Sunday Morning Tinkle. We're back from our summer break. We're in a new location, so for those listening on audio, if you notice the noise is very echoey, it's because we just don't have three mics to pass around. Right. So, um, yeah, our first episode in person. Yeah. For uh, a year and a half, I think, right? And also, yeah. my first yeah, time first. on yes. the show. <laughs> yes, Marty's yeah, well, here. It was the, the um, last. The last time that we were in person was like at, right um, before the draft, I think, in 2021, something like that. It was. We did like yeah. a 40 yard dash. Yeah. So you probably saw that. Yeah. Um, we be. were at Basil Morella Park. There won't be any running this time, I promise. Yeah, yeah please. You don't want to see it. <laughs> you know, we don't need to be tearing no ACLs no. or anything like that. So, because there's three of us here today and we're all kind of just squeezed together, you know, trying to fit on camera, um, we're going to keep this episode at a decent length. Um, we've changed up kind of the takeaways for this round. And instead of, you know, just doing the weekly stories, because we're still in the middle of baseball, we're still in the middle of a nonsense preseason. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to do a little thing called, how what did we miss? Because we've been off for a month and a half. Almost two months. So with that, um, I don't think we discussed it too much, but I'll let Marty start because we'll go... <clears throat> For you guys, right to left or left to right, whatever it is, mm-hmm. um, so, so because he's the guest. So. Yeah. Well, I do want to correct you at least somewhat on yeah. saying that it was a bit of a nonsensical preseason for football because, at least for okay. me, okay. <laughs> them Steelers, they're looking pretty good in the preseason. I mean, we okay. had. Um, literally, like, not even, what, last night? Yeah, last night, the Steelers well, took Thursday out... Thursday night, because we're well, recording okay, Friday. Okay, yeah, so, <laughs> last night for, you know, but, um, so, on Thursday night, the Steelers took on the Falcons, and they absolutely crushed them. <laughs> so... And same thing happened to the Bills. Sorry, Jason. So, um. I mean, it's all right. When uh, the offense commits like 12 different penalties in the first half, I guess it's bound to happen. Well, either way. I don't want to get my hopes up too much. But I will say, judging by. All of that in the preseason for the Steelers, hmm. I think it's safe to say that the regular season might look pretty good for the Steelers. I mean, let's be fair. They're always the find a way team, right? Yeah. Because it seems like, you know, last year we're like, they're going to tank, they're going to go yes, 3 and even 13 I, or 3 and 14. Yes. And they come out with a 9 and 8 nine record. 9 and 8 record. Yeah. It's still so a winning season. They're a team that's always going to find yeah. a winning season. Yeah. I don't think by any stretch, and again, our NFL specials in a week and a half, um, but I just don't think they're going to find a way to the playoffs necessarily. No. But no. I, I mean, we didn't even make forward. playoffs last year. I will say this now. I mean, they have it, – it's a very prove-it kind of year for the Steelers yes. because you have Allen Robinson who absolutely sucked – on the Rams. So I don't know what kind of Allen Robinson. Are you going to get the Chicago Allen Robinson or are you going to get the last year Allen Robinson on the Rams? That's a big, big if. I think George Pickens is going to be the probably the biggest upside wide yes. receiver for the Steelers this year. We and also it depends him. on what kind of Kenny Pickett are we going to get. Are yeah. we going to get the Kenny Pickett that we, we saw in college? Are we going to get the Kenny Pickett that was... Up and down last year, kind of getting a fill yeah. for the NFL. Yeah. Here's the thing. Are we going to get the one? Is he going to look? I guess the best way to sum it up is, is he going to look like Mac Jones, or is he going to take that giant leap like, um, you know, Justin Herbert, Patrick Mahomes, Trevor Lawrence? It, you know, I think, I think that's the few things we got to talk about here. Yeah. I mean, he is the if factor, but I don't want him to be like a Nate Peters, Peterman where he's going to look good in the preseason and get to the regular season and just 
be a, a, an, another average quarterback. Yeah. And yes, us Bills. Yeah. Uh, me being a Bills fan, I all, re- all remember the Nathan Peterman years. Um, I remember have fun, one. Chicago. <laughs> Let me tell you something. We've seen this before. He's looking great in preseason. Let me tell you something. Yeah, if Justin Fields ever was hurt, you're screwed. Yeah. I, yeah. And and honestly, yeah. like, you know, I I hear everyone. I, I, I hear both of you about mm-hmm. Kenny Pickett. And I mean, yes, you're right. He did have a very up and down season last year with the Steelers. I mean, but it also comes down to how do we think, uh, and and also where do we see uh, Mitchell Trubisky like popping in? Because last season, when Kenny came down with an injury in the game, Mitch stepped right up, and he did what he needed to do, and he got us the win. Can we see that again, possibly this season, if? Kenny Pickett doing that. I think Mitchell Trubisky gets a bad rep to begin with. I can agree with that. Because of his time in Chicago. Yes. He's not a starting quarterback, though. Let's no. just face it. No. Okay. And you we know? tried our hand with him and, last season, and, and it just didn't well, work. Well, we knew last year, though, he was on a short leash. Anytime you bring in a yes. guy that's a veteran and you draft a quarterback in the first round, you know that if that veteran starts week one, he's on the short leash, you know. That yeah. means... You know, you keep screwing around, you keep screwing up, you cost us games, you're yeah. going to be on the bench very quick. Yeah. And that's exactly uh, what happened. It does seem odd, you know, that Mitchell Drabisky and, you know, Kenny Pickett. But you also have to fi- figure out that if Kenny Pickett struggles, is he on a tight leash too? I get it, he's your, you know, your top, he's your future, quarterback of the future and stuff yeah. like that. But you have a guy like Mitchell Trubisky that's just, you know, slightly there and just reminding Pickett, you mess up, bud. I'm still here that can, you know, well, let's pump the brakes, too, on that. And not that I want to cut you no, off, you're fine. Well, Let's pump the brakes on that because keep in mind, you bench a starting quarterback that's in his second year or third right, year. Right, right. Um, it's not a good look. Right. Okay? Uh, yeah. look, for instance, look at Mac Jones. He got benched for Bailey Zapp. And now it's mm-hmm. like, well, Mac Jones is going to start this year, but if he yeah. struggles, could we see Bailey Zapp taking over for him? I mean, I'm is he going to make the roster? Is probably not. Question. But I will say this uh, for Kenny Pickett: he is looking good. He's throwing the ball well. He looks like he's a veteran out there. But again, it's preseason. A you're lot of these, you're not, team you're not really yeah. playing up against a lot of starters. Right, he can look good against the rate, the you know the Falcons or any team for that matter. Right. right. Yeah, I get it. They beat the Bills, but also how much of that can be said? Well, the Bills kind of beat themselves, and the Steelers just took advantage of it. Yeah. Because yeah. you had all those penalties, you had Barkley throwing picks. So again. You're, you know, but I'll tell you, everyone who said Barkley was going to be the number two guy, I think they <laughs> they woke up to quite a surprise on I think Sunday morning. I will say this now, and I hate to make the talk about it, but if I were going to talk a little slight about it, I'm going to say that this last game against the Bears, just because of that, I think is really going to determine who is the number two. Mm-hmm. Because I think that... Well, Kyle Allen would be better than Mark, Matt Barkley. Only because Kyle Allen's got starting experience, Matt Barkley really does not. He Matt does, Barkley. but he doesn't. He's come in and done well. I mean, look at the the time where they beat the Jet, the Bills and the Jets beat each other. Matt Barkley went off for, in that game, scored yeah. 41 points. But again, that was against a Jets team that's not as good as they, used, they are right now. Yeah. So, uh, see. But again, um... I mean, good luck to the Pittsburgh Steelers. Yeah. Time will tell during the well, season. Well, another see. thing I wanted to add also is the fact that if Mitch doesn't step up, we still have Mason Rudolph. Yeah, I don't, uh, I don't like that. I don't know if I like that. I Mr. mean, no, but, guy. Like, you know, but he's still an option. Well, well let's say if both <laughs> Kenny Pickett and Mitchell Drabisky both struggle for Pittsburgh, your, your season, you might as well just 
go back at the drawing board and be like, what do we need? What do we need to focus on? What yeah. do we need to improve on? Because if it's like one of those things where both of our quarterbacks who had a starting experience struggle, can we trust Mason Rudolph, even though he's played a couple of games for us? It, it's, yeah. it's looking really bad. But um, other than that, uh, are yeah. you done with your takeaways there? Uh, yeah, uh, I'll take it from here. But let me just say, though, pump the brakes on Mason Rudolph. It's only his second year. I think next year, you know, we could see something like a prove it year for him, yeah. like where they go out and get all these big receivers, get this. Well, I mean, they got a decent tight end anyway in Firma, so right. that's Ooh. not going to happen. I was going to say, yeah. see, yeah. it could it couldn't be any worse for Mason Rudolph as than Trey Lance, who went from. <laughs> We're still talking trade rumors about him. Yeah, I know. <laughs> we'll save that for another day. We though. will. Um, but. Let me take this moment. Now, again, this segment's kind of what did I miss instead of the week's takeaways. So let's talk about Shohei Otani yeah. and Showtime because, you know, Jason, you and I were talking about it before we went on break, how he's leading the team not only in every hitting category, mm -hmm. but he's leading the team in every pitching category too. Right. Now, he's hurt now, but, of course, going back to July – it was the the trade deadline. Mm -hmm. You know, there were heavy speculations. I mean, every media outlet was reporting the Yankees are close to a deal. The Yankees are going to work this deal to get Shoei Otani. Now, keep in mind, the Yankees at the time were just below 500 or within 500 by a couple games. Yeah, they were um, actually. And, you know, Aaron Judge was on the IL. Mm, yeah. And, you know, I'm sitting here, I'm like, man, if they do it, I'm done. I'm not covering baseball on this show anymore <laughs> because I can't stand. First off, you know, again, for those who are new to the show, I don't watch the Yankees or, or baseball mostly because the Yankees buy everybody out. But come trade deadline, and once again, it's another Brian Cashman flop in that there's no deal put together. Um, and now the Yankees sit 61 and 66 as, as of Friday night. In the division. However, it's not over. Excuse me. Because he could still, of course, Shoei Otani will be a free agent this offseason. However, we know the Angels have money, but so do the Yankees. So. I'm not even going to go there because I know it's like way out of our price range. It's way out of our. Yeah. You know, nah, the like Cubs I'm not even gonna Cubs, like yeah. I'm not even gonna like yeah. Cubs I'm a Cubs Cubs. fan, but I'm also a realistic fan. It's like I'm not gonna be the kind of guy of like, oh yeah, the Cubs will get him. It's like no, they won't. It's, no, they won't. We don't have enough money to afford him. Yeah. To me, it's between the Dodgers, the Yankees, and the Angels. That's what I think it's going to be. Um, Those are three very lovely know. options. And the question is, does Shoei want money? Because he's going to be the highest paid player I feel in baseball. Like he's going to want money. And if he's not, if he's not the highest paid player in baseball, I don't know what to say. Because the man is the all around, uh, literally the all around. Yeah. Um, and again, you know, does he care about money more or does he care about being in a winning culture? Because right now the Yankees can't provide a winning culture based on yeah. what they got. Um, Proven that since tw 2009. Yeah. Okay. Um, Which was the last year they won the World Series. The Dodgers, they have a winning culture. They also have a little bit of a high payroll right now. Now, again, no salary cap, but are they going to be willing to break the bank and pay a little bit of a luxury tax just to get them? I could see that being a possibility. And then we know with the Angels, they got money. I mean, Mike yeah. Trout, um, Albert Pujols' oh, yeah. 10-year deal. Yeah with them, you know, many years ago. It's not out of the question. I forgot about Mike Trout. Yeah, True. I mean, either way, like, wherever Shohei Otani ends up, you know it's going to be the right the right fit for him. Yeah. But, it, but to your point, it also depends on whether or not he wants to play for money or if he wants to play for a winning culture. And if he wants to play for a winning culture, he's going to end up in the right place. Well, He's but if you want to play for money, then... Well, let's face it. He's going to play for money. But what I'm saying well, is, yeah. is the winning culture going to play into it? Probably. Because, you know... Again, yeah, yeah. No matter where he goes, he's going to get paid. Right, right. 
and the other thing, and the other thing we could throw in there is the Mets. Okay, because keep in oh, yeah. mind, yeah. Cohen, their owner, has already said he will break the bank to get players on yeah, that team. He made that clear when he entered. Now again, <laughs> they're in the restructuring again, where they said 2025 is the year we think we're going to have a team ready for yep. the World Series. Yeah. Do they take that leap a year early and say, you know what, Shoei, it's not going to be a good year. We're just going to tell you straight up, it's not going to be a good year, but if you stick it out for one year, we have a plan, we will take the division. Guaranteed. Okay? And we will make the World Series. Do they make that pitch? Yeah. Um, (laughs) Because, you know, again. They very well could. You know, there's four realistic teams. Now, someone could come out of the blue and just be like, you know what? We're a small market team, but we'll pay it. We'll pay them. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, so, with that, yeah, uh, we're, we're going to have Daniel probably pop down the Probably second. will. I was going to say, I don't know if you guys heard that, but the, the doorbell went, went off. But yeah. other than that, uh, Jonathan Taylor, as you all know, has uh, wanted some money, thought he could be one of the um, high. I, <laughs> uh, I got one of those paid for a for running second. backs. Um, I just keep going. You're good. All right. <laughs> As you know, that Jonathan Taylor wants some money. He was one of those running backs that has uh, come together with other running backs, saying that you know running backs should be paid a little bit more for you know all that they do. And well, now. He has come to the conclusion that he wants a trade. And originally, Jeremy Rosset was like, nope, we're not going to trade Jonathan Taylor. Jonathan Taylor is probably going to hold out and whatnot. But now, it's been made official that the Colts have allowed him to request a trade. Um, thoughts on that one? The Dolphins have been one of the teams that have inquired on him, but apparently have gotten rejected at the first try, but they are keep on making rounds to, to send them. And one of those rumored names, Dolphins fans, I don't know if you want to hear it, but one of those rumored names that have been popping around have been Jalen Wow. we got a Dolphin stand in the room in the background. He's too shy to get on camera, but... Oh, man. That's why Jason keeps looking back, by the way. Um, that's why you heard some it, of the it, background. It's, it's weird because, like, you would think that, you know, the Dolphins, all they had to worry about is giving up a first-round draft pick, which the, Dol- the Colts really do want that first-round draft pick or a player of the same value. Dolphins are well, Could Waddle be that player that could be of the same value as Jonathan Taylor? One and two, is it worth giving up a a first round draft pick when you don't know what the future holds for the team itself too. So I don't know. I'm in the position it's not worth giving up a receiver. It's okay. It's definitely not. Let's face it, it's not in the posi- it's not in a good position, especially with Tyree Hill's rumors of retiring when his contract's over. Um so oh, that, after this year, right? Yeah. I think or the next year. Yeah. Next say, year. Yeah. yeah, we just got corrected. So um they are in a position, though, where they need to win now. And they're in a position where they could, I'm sorry, they could take the division. Well, yeah, of They course. very well could. No, they very well could. Okay. So, I mean, to me, what's a first-round pick when you're in that when you're in that position? What's... I, I mean, mean, you would have to take the next step. And that's why they're tr- still trying to work things out with the Colts. Unfortunately, the Colts could be that stubborn team to be like, well, if you're not going to give us what we want, then... Uh, you're done. Hmm. Yeah. We're, we're done hearing what you have to well, offer. Well, we Jim Mercer's a loose cannon. That's what I'm saying. Like, that's like that's the thing. You and would the, have to send them what they want, or you're not going to get to that player. In, in a normal situation, in a normal situation, when it's not an owner with a loose cannon right. like Jim Mercer, no, it's the right move. You know, no, it's a the real question up. is: Is Jonathan Taylor said to be a free agent after this current year? I think so. Yeah. Why? I mean, it could just end up being where he sits out the whole entire year, becomes a free agent, and then teams go after him afterwards. I think but he's at camp. What though. if this ends up being a situation where, because we had a running back that had problems and then got released, Delvin Cook. What if this ends up being a Delvin Cook situation where he gets released by the Colts and goes elsewhere? That could be possible. 
He because, could also get claimed on waivers. That's the other thing. True. And but then he can end like, up exactly where he doesn't want to go. Exactly. So it the best situation for Jonathan Taylor is probably getting traded somewhere so, yeah. so of a team that wants him. And if the Dolphins are fighting for him, which they already lost out on the um the Dalvin Cook situation. They lost out on um Ezekiel Elliott, even though he's probably not going to, he's mm. probably going to go there. But um, <laughs> we forgot about Zeke going to the Patriots. I was going to say, <laughs> if you look at the situation in the AFC East, you get a guy like Jonathan Taylor. Now it's like Buffalo. What are you doing here? You have, you have James Cook, but we haven't seen what James Cook's potential is. We've seen Delvin Cooks. We've seen Ezekiel Elliotts. We've seen Jonathan Taylors. Now it's like if if Dolphins get Jonathan Taylor, the Bills like those teams are gonna be like looking at Buffalo and be like, step up, M effort, because you know, yeah, we got some top running backs here. Not saying that Ezekiel Elliott's been all that good. The only season that he did well was his rookie year. But again, it just the Dolphins really have to like go all in on this or they're gonna lose out on top running back. And that could be what they need to push them over the limit to be able to win a division, go far in the playoffs. You know, look how close they were to Buffalo last year until like the very end. And with Tua, if he can stay healthy, they could very well trade a first round. Now, if Tua goes in and gets hurt again, yeah, with a concussion, I think he's yeah. done. What? I will jump in. All right. I guess he's, he's right. had enough of right. us yeah. smashing his team. That's my brother, by the way. The Dolphins also have to keep in mind Jonathan Taylor has one more year out of his contract left. Yeah, which we talked about. Okay. Yeah. I, I wasn't here for that. But. Yeah. But, yeah, I mean, I guess you have to take that into consideration when you're trading weight. You can, yeah, it kind of takes away your value. How much do you want to give hmm. when you're going to be spending a lot of money next offseason if you do trade for him? Yeah. Right. But, but again, even more even importantly, it's a one-year thing. Yeah. But, but even more importantly, you said it yourself. If Tua stays healthy and doesn't get like another concussion or whatever, I mean, because mm-hmm. if Tua can stay healthy, I think the Dolphins have a really good mm-hmm. ch- chance to see the problem I have with everything Tua, Jonathan Taylor related. You don't have a very strong O line. So yeah. First off, you don't know how healthy Tua can stay because of that one. Two. That's true. Can Jonathan Taylor, with a crappy O-line, still have as much production as he did with a really good O-line in Indianapolis? Well, here's the other. That's also another question that plays a factor, too. And three, can Jonathan Taylor help Tua when he's got guys coming after being that dip-and-dunk kind of player that can get yards after carry, yards after catch, you know, yards... That can help this t- offense really be that dynamic because I think he can. He's somebody that can catch the ball out of the backfield. Yeah. He's a good runner too. Don't get me wrong, but I think that he can be somebody that can probably He's get them off the right back. And now that's right. what I was gonna s- send a side question with. Now again, if Tua does get hurt, let's say they do, and again, I think if Tua stays healthy, mm-hmm. dropping a first round, maybe two first rounders to get him. I don't think I that don't it's in a bad position. I'd say one first rounder is a good is a good move. Only because you know what? If he doesn't resign, at least we got one year. We're saying to Buffalo, hey, we're chasing you now. Right. It's on. True. Okay. And this has got to be the year. Of course, two isn't a contract year. Mm-hmm. He didn't get his fifth option picked up, did he? No, I don't think so. No. So as far as I know. So, you know what? If you're gonna say, you know what, let's go after it this year. And then we'll worry about two in the off season. Right. This is the right move. You would probably have and, to. And also, if Tua gets hurt, your quarterback is just as good as your running back in the backfield. True. Now, I'm not saying that losing if they lose Tua and get Jonathan Taylor, that they can go on, win the division, and run away in the playoffs. What I'm saying is they can at least do a little bit of patchwork. Mm-hmm. If Tua comes back, at, you know, like Tua gets hurt midseason, he comes back at the end, and they have Jonathan Taylor. This is a team that, hey, they can survive. 
those few weeks, right. they can maybe make a push for the fifth, sixth seed. I, and then, you know, when Tua's back, if he's as good as he was when he's healthy, or, you know, when, he's coming when, back he's, from injury. when he comes back from injury, this is now a team that's a 5-6 seed that can make a deep run in right. the playoffs. True. I just don't know if, I would be, if it would be a smart move to trade away Waddle. No, I, and Probably that's what I stand with. No, no. no. no trading receiver. Because if you get rid of him, you already him? lost Trent Sherfield to Buffalo. You'll mm-hmm. lose Waddle. That really only leaves one mm-hmm. true receiver, and Hill can't do it yeah. all by himself. I mean, he's good. He's fast. He can go past you know defensive backs like nothing. But the problem is, if you if you like if he's your main focus every single passing play. That takes you know that takes your passing game right out of the equation. Yes. So all I can say is Dolphins, play it smart, play it reasonable. Don't get stupid. Don't give up too much if it's not exactly. Go for it. Yeah, right. Look, I think the first round is at least an olive branch in my eyes. Mm-hmm. The first round is a decent olive branch where it's like, look, it's not too much, it's not too little, and you know if we if. We're successful. We're good. If not, right? You know, I think hey, most certain most of them handle the backfield. I mean, they're not top running backs like yeah. say Jonathan Taylor, but I would also not. I'd be okay if the Dolphins said, "Look, we're not getting what we want for. We're not giving up so much for Jonathan Taylor. Let's mm-hmm. just back off." I don't. I'm not. I don't yeah. want to give up so much for him. So. I feel like we've talked over you this whole time. You got anything else to add on that? Or, it's kind of turned into a panel. So it's, well, I mean, <laughs> it's all right. You know what? I like this. To be honest, um, we won't turn it into a rotating door here, though. No. I'm like speaking of panels. That's, that's what was going to be my uh, turn. <laughs> that was. Yeah, that's gonna be the perfect segue now. I'll let Jason take it because he's got the thousands. Undisputed will roll with numerous hosts. Um, it has been made official for one, but um, including names with Lil Wayne, which I'm which Lil is Wayne kind on of Friday. interesting. I guess uh, Rochelle Rochelle Nichols, yeah, Rachel Nichols from uh, ESPN, Richard who's... Sherman, others, uh, Sharp. Is joining him. It's been the main official. He's joining him September 4th. Sharp is joining first take, not undisputed. Oh, that's right. So, um, but Richard Sherman's supposedly going to be the biggest face on undisputed outside of Skip right. Bayless. Um, I will say now that, um, I mean, we. it goes into the last one. Is sports debate show is getting too insane? I think so. Because I'll add on that because, quite frankly, you know, this might be a bit of a hot take, but I'm just going to go for it. At this rate, after everything that happened with Shannon Sharp and Skip Bayless, who really wants to get on that show? And like, Exactly. You yes. know what? That's, I think, the point we're about. Yeah, that's exactly yeah, I like yeah. that we're getting That was on. good. <laughs> well, see, the problem is, is that Skip Bayless acts like what... what his word is better than anybody else's word. And I think it's like that with Stephen A. Smith a little bit, too. Mm. But, but, but I will he say has Steve, a lot more class than I was going to say, Skip Stephen A. Smith <laughs> does know a lot more. As I, th- maybe I thought he did. Because let me tell you something, Stephen A. Smith. First off, get your sources correct. <laughs> oh, he's... Second off... Where the hell do you think that St- that Stefan Diggs was gonna be wanting gone from Buffalo? If you wanted gone from Buffalo so badly, one, he would have asked asked for a trade. Two, he would not be on the team right now. Three, he wouldn't have shown up. Hey, he wouldn't have shown up for a training camp. And four, he would be holding out if he wanted to gone from Buffalo. So let me tell you something. Get your sources correct. This is why I'm saying these analysts. If you really want to be you know, making these talk shows so great, you got to get your facts straight, or you're gonna get people bashing you on social media, which I'm pretty sure he got a lot of extensive Bills fans hating him for that afterwards. Well, let's be fair, we're also a show that took a little bit of heat with the Lamar Jackson. Yes, thing. we were yeah, a little while ago. It was a while ago. But, but again, because <laughs> I saw it all around. Oh, he wants out. He wants yeah, out. I have sources. He wants out. Comment. 
He went on first take himself and said that sources. Yes. What are these said sources? And two, was this just sources before he decided to show up again with the bills? You, you know what it was? Is his sources were his friends at the bar when they were drinking and you know probably having, was. having happy hour on the L.A. Strip there. His or, sources were do LA, trust uh, me. That's why Hollywood Boulevard. It's going to be that. interesting to see how Shannon Sharp and Stephen A. Smith are going to sh- do a uh, first take. Because if it's anything sure. like how it was for Undisputed, I don't think it's going to be all that good. I hate to say I it. Think, I think Undisputed, first off, going back to what Marty said, mm-hmm. who wants to work with Skip Bayless full-time, number one? Nope. Um, the only one who did step up was Nick Wright and Skip Bayless. First off, this should be a tinkle on this um, secondary, like, you know, honorable mention. Right. Skip Bayless said, I don't want to be made to look like a fool. With Nick Wright. First off, you'd make each other look like fools. Well, you'd make a mockery of the sports profession. Past him looking yeah. like a fool on national television. Yeah. Yeah. I'll tell you that now. But, <laughs> yeah, there's no going back on that. Now, um, and again, Little Wayne is a little bit of a joke. <laughs> yeah, because what does he know about sports? I was going to say, yeah. the only thing he really knows about sports is being a Steelers fan. That's about it. Is that it? I'm pretty sure. Or is he the Green I, I can't tell you. I was going to say, I thought Steelers he was Packers or, because he, he Packers made the, he yellow. made green and yellow in, That's right. like, he's probably the, not right. necessarily he's the parody, man. but, like, My in bad. response to black yeah, and yellow know, vibes with bad. green. It looks bad, I was going to say. Uh, but I will say this now. I mean, it's not like who he's got is exactly yeah. terrible. They're, you know, they could be knowledgeable, like, um, Rachel Nichols, I mean, she covers well, she's NBA. Not good at debating. That's um, the whole Richard thing. Sherman. See, I will say, a lot of the people that you have are not really great at debating. They're just analysts. Richard Sherman would just bring an entertainment aspect because we know what Richard Sherman does on a, on a hot microphone. Yes, I know. That's I'm the true. best corner in the game. Yeah, I know. <laughs> yeah. That's very true. Yeah. But the problem with a show like Undisputed is Skip Bayless is going to try to talk over them, try to act like he knows too much more than the people that have played the sports yes, themselves or have covered the sports for years. Mm-hmm. So I, yeah, I don't know I how mean, I feel about it. We um, could do an entire say, show on it's how sad classless. It's, yes. Yeah. You know, the Stephen A. Smith knows a little bit more than Skip Bayless. Skip Bayless is somebody that... Skip Bayless is too he much. He will say something and then put you down and tell you agree with him. Basically. Yeah, right, very much. But Skip, I was gonna say Skip Bayless is very classless. I, I don't even care if I get slapped for it. I, I mean, I mean, I, like Steve, I really do Stephen like Stephen A. Smith. I, I've always liked First Take. I mean, I, I used to watch it when it was Skip Bayless and Stephen A. Smith. Yeah, and even back then when it was two the two of them, it wasn't like it was exactly terrible. No, it yeah. just. Well, I will the say landscape, their their moods, the way that, you know, the way that they are, are very similar. Let's be fair. Too. They pioneered the both of them together. They pioneered this thing that's called you know a duo sports debate, right? Whatever. And now they're ruining it by you know because again, Stephen A. You know he's gone on his own podcast and said I make the choices of who comes in the door and works with me. So. You know, first off, that, kind of that, should, be up, that, should, that should be up to the ESPN execs. Now, number two, same thing with Skip Bayless. He's now got that same power. Now, the Fox executives not as receptive of it as the ESPN ones. But, you know, and again, Stephen A., he's the kind of guy he's never wrong. Right. He's never wrong. Okay, Skip Bayless is just some senile old man who thinks that, you know, the Cowboys are still good, like they're in the 90s, and, you know, right. he just shows up in fancy shoes and runs his mouth because he thinks <laughs> he doesn't realize what time of year it is anymore. Right. So, um, why else would he be screaming into a microphone for yeah. three hours a day? I was gonna say, yeah, he's he's so blind to believe that the Cowboys, like, are really as good as they no. were in the nineties. And it's like, but, dude, have you even opened your eyes but, and paid attention? But it's also the stupid comments. I believe he said one about Dak Prescott's mental health. 
which tipped everybody off, oh, yeah. you know. Mm-hmm. Then the Damar Hamlin thing, which everybody got mad at. Yeah, and I then, forgot what he said about that. He said something about canceling the game, that it wasn't right. Yeah, or something. and then he went right. on Twitter afterwards and I'm like, oh, yeah. I apologize for yeah. making yeah. the comments that but, I did. But, again, you shouldn't have been making those comments yeah. in the first place. And then he wouldn't let yeah. Shannon Sharp give his own but take. here's the thing. How many times has he gone, uh, what's it, uh, undisputed and apologized? But how many times has his representatives told him to go on undisputed and apologize? Right. Well, to save right. his place. Yeah. To save faith, yeah. No. This, we could get into this debate yeah. off camera, but let's face it. Fox it. executives, unless you commit murder, you're going to be on air. Right. right. Like, but, again... I'm not getting into the political debate. There may be four of us, but this is not the view yeah, by yeah, any stretch of the say. imagination. And I was going to say, we could do now. an entire episode on, like, and debate with Sorry to have to be no. touching base, but, uh, well, it is fantasy football. We're having yeah. our draft. Yeah, we actually have to uh, hurry up I, here. Yeah. So, so I don't, uh, who do we like? Who do we hate? I like Nick Chubb. He, I mean, Without he Kareem be. Hunt, I think that's a big... You know, bigger I, role. To I mean, fill, Nick, I think he's the guy. Nick Chubb wasn't. I mean, I don't think he's a bad option. I think Justin it's Jefferson is going to still have years. that great upside factor. Somebody that Kirk Cousins always likes to give the ball. I mean, he's. I, I think Vikings. I mean, we were like Brian and I were even talking about it. I think Vikings might have been able, might have gotten a one up in that trade. For digs back in the day, because that pick that they got from Buffalo, they got with Justin Jefferson, and I think that they might have gotten a one up from Buffalo. I mean, don't get me wrong; both players have had really good years. I mean, look at Justin Jefferson; the few years he's been there. Look at Diggs; he's had a career years in Buffalo, putting up um, he had like a career year of touchdowns with 11 this past season with Buffalo, even with all the distractions, everything that has happened. But I will say that Justin Jefferson, I think, is the best player that, you know, could be up there. Um, I don't think anyone's disputing you on that one, but... I will say, I think uh, Christian McCaffrey is kind of iffy because, I mean, Brock Purdy, I know he's coming off of that injury. I thought he was going to be out for the whole entire year. I think Tyreek's, uh, Tyreek Hill's, uh, Value depends solely on Tua's health. Because yeah. if you look at last year, when Tua, when Tua was injured, he completely saw such a decrease in production, fantasy-wise, and on the field. Can I start with my concerns on Matt, on uh, Barkley? Um, Saquon Barkley is a big concern for yes, me he with is. the contract. Um, Austin Eckler, even though he's staying one more year, that's a big concern for me. Not just because of the new offensive coordinator, Mm -hmm. but because, again, he wants out. He does not want to be there. How much of it does he take out on the team and say, you know what, I'm not going in on third down. I want to, you know, I'll play, but I'm going to preserve myself. He could. Um, I think a lot of one player that might have an upside that could be an interesting option, but John Robinson. I mean, I think that he's somebody that could shock a lot of people. Yeah. Be like you know one of those running backs that nobody sees coming. I mean, I get it's in Atlanta. Atlanta's kind of iffy. They have a quarterback that doesn't look like he's all that good. They don't really have the top receivers either. Drake London's kind of <laughs> up and down. But I think Bajan Robinson could be somebody that can help that Atlanta Falcons team out big time. Now let's not also forget. And I think I'm going to throw this one in the dark, too. Ripley's back. And he's with the Jacksonville Jaguars. I was going to say. How much does that impact? That I think that that impacts a lot. I think I I was going to say, from what, I haven't seen a whole lot of him in Jacksonville, but from what I was seeing and hearing, it looks like he might actually be poised for a breakout year this year with the Jacksonville and I bet he's betting on it. Oh, oh, I bet he is. <laughs> uh, um, first of all, play, okay, we talked about a lot of players we like. What about players we hate? Well, I think I already pointed that out by saying my concerns for oh, uh, yes. you know the running backs. Right? I said my That's concerns true. about Tyreek Hill. Yeah. Um, um, if uh, I'm gonna do anything, like you know, and I'm not even saying this 
as like, you know, personal bias or anything. I don't know in fantasy that I would go with like Kenny Pickett and George Pickens because Pickens in a PPR in a PPR, yes. Well, yeah, okay, Pickens in a PPR, which we are in. But Kenny Pickett alone, I don't know. I will state this now. I think the one. I don't know. I'm trying to think of. Got out. I feel like I had it. Um, the one player that might be iffy this year, just because of how you know Garoppolo and stuff, mm-hmm. Devontae Adams. I don't know if I like New going Garoppolo. after him. Aiden O'Connell. Garoppolo, or, um... if he stays healthy, yes. If he cannot stay healthy, no. But O'Connell might actually be a quarterback that. The Raiders might have to look into it for the future. There's a rumor he's going to be QB1. There's already that rumor. I don't know around. if I like that. Still give it to Garoppolo because he's got the experience and he's I taken to teams to the Super Bowl before. So, And this is going to seem obvious. I do not like any of the Buccaneers receivers this year. No. I don't either. Absolutely. No. Stay away. Um, yeah, Baker Mayfield throwing the ball. Possibly Kyle Trask if it doesn't go well with Baker. Now the other question is the Rams and Cooper Cup. Because keep True. in mind, we did not talk race. much about this because I believe we were off when the rumors all started, but the Rams were feverishly trying to get rid of Matt Stafford this offseason. I don't know if I like that. And, and again, it doesn't matter if the rumors are true or not. The rumors are out there and how much of that is taken out in the locker room. Uh, you know, Because now any time a play goes wrong or this goes wrong or that goes wrong, it's going to be, you know, the team's going to turn on him because they're going to be like, look, you know, we should have traded you. Right. You know? And I think that's going to be the mindset this season. On the Rams, so, yeah. You know, man, we could have gotten rid of you. We could have gotten some picks. We could have gotten a younger quarterback. True. You know, so I, I already don't like the Rams situation, but, again, I'm going to save that for our NFL season preview in a week and a half. Um so, I think we covered the bases there. Yeah. So, let's get to so the take on, on this. this. And this one's perfect because Daniel's not only a Dolphins fan, but he is a Mets fan. Um, so, the Mets played on picks 11, which they do. Them and the Yankees do at least, you know, two, three, you know, a handful of times a year. Um, and apparently the stage manager or something said, listen, be sure you wear your picks 11 polos because that's the network we're on. Well, their analyst did not wear his Pix 11 polo, and instead of, you know, just going with it, they duct tape Pix 11 on his uh, (laughs) chest. That's great. Hand-drawn logo, too. Um, And, of course, you know, they have to draw attention to it, because any time a broadcaster screws up, they got to draw the attention there. So with that, um, I don't even know who this analyst is, but to the Mets... Gary Cohen, I believe it was. So at that, tinkle on this, Gary Cohen. Um, That's crazy. And, oh my gosh. Uh, so, all right. I don't know if i got to ask you what's coming up, because I feel like we just don't know. I will say that now, I, we're going to try our darnest to bring it back. I know fans have been thinking, where's well, been no final bell the last three weeks? It's almost the last I've month. I've been pushing it. I've been pushing it, too. And... I will say, um, hopefully, hopefully the next couple weeks we can definitely bring it back. We'll we'll definitely probably have like some pay per view. Um, ask all in is this Sunday by the pay per view if you want to watch it. Literally after you're done listening to this podcast, buy the pay per view. <laughs> Glad to see yes. we got the AEW plug in. AEW's going to love you. Wembley Stadium, <laughs> the biggest, wrestling, biggest wrestling event in res, pro wrestling history, should stay at. Um, 80,000 plus. By the way, uh, it beat out SummerSlam. It beat out WrestleMania 32. So it's already beaten out WWE with the biggest attendance record of all professional wrestling um, companies out there. I, I know, um, but congratulations to WWE. They actually broke a WrestleMania record for the most 90, tickets sold. 90,000 tickets on day one. Wow. So, but also, if you're interested, Impact Wrestling, Emergence, Fight TV, YouTube Ultimate Insider, <laughs> Impact Plus, 
8 p.m. Yeah, but I will <laughs> say this. I will say this now. Um, I, I'm looking forward to the NFL season. I think it's going to be a good one. I think there's going to be a lot of teams that are going to surprise us yeah. this year. Um, but I will say this now. Um, um, rest in peace to a couple of wrestlers too. Yeah. Um, I think yeah. we'll bring light on that too when we bring the back, the show back. Um, rest in peace to Bray um, Wyatt. Rest in peace to Terry Terry Funk Wyndham. forever. Mm-hmm. Uh, and um, and Terry Funk. So mm-hmm. rest in peace to you guys. But other than that, um, what's going up on out of turn four there? Brian? Coming up on Alex Plo's Days of Our Lives. <laughs> um, <laughs> If you've been following that, you know, I know you don't watch any kind of, my God. He signs a deal with Errol McLaren. He takes money in advance. And now they're going to court because he said he won't drive for them after taking money from them. So we got to keep talking about the Alex Pelos saga. Um, IndyCar silly season, NASCAR silly season, and the playoffs, which first off I was very wrong about because and I'll admit it on the big show here because I admitted it on Tuesday. I was dead wrong about William Byron, um, plain and simple. Um, five wins. It might be six after, you know, we finish recording. But, oh, my God, we were so wrong about him and others. I'll make my playoff bracket, and we'll uh, enjoy some silly season news or drama. That's why I had to call it Days of Our Lives, because it's just chaos. And Marcus Erickson and Dreddy, too. Oh, man. So, with that, we're off to do our fantasy draft. I'm sorry we're not doing any live ones this year. Just don't have the time. So, uh, thank you for watching, and thank you, too, for being here and sliding in. Thank you. Daniel pulling the old Collinsworth slide back there. (laughs) Um, And with that... We'll be back next Sunday. Until then, goodbye, everyone.